Good morning, my name is Bart Seitze, um, Technical Sales and Business Development Manager at DuPont. And I'm here today with Jan Willem Bruyste. Good morning, uh, Bart. So my name, as Bart already introduced, is uh, Jan Willem Bruyste, and I'm the, uh, the segment lead for the medical division at Coveris. And the reason why we're here today is that uh, we wanted to have a short discussion on sustainability with Coveris. Coveris is one of our authorized converters. That means um, we sell our Tavik products not directly to our downstream customers, but through converters like Coveris. And um, my job is to deal with our downstream customers, so medical device manufacturers and pharmaceutical companies. And during my visits to them, I found out that sustainability has become a very important topic and in the past I always had the feeling that it was only about uh, talking about sustainability but now uh, something is really changing and that's also one of the reasons we've invited Jan Willem to talk a little bit about it and Jan Willem can you tell me what Coveris is doing? Um, yeah. yeah yeah so um, yeah, Coveris is one of the uh, the leaders in the, in the flexible packaging uh, in Europe um, of course, we make medical packaging, but next to this, we also make food packaging, consumer packaging, uh, and, and for home and personal care packaging. And out of this area, we see one of the key drivers of, of, of R&D is sustainability. So uh, within food, it's a very important thing. And uh, we see more and more, or we hear more and more from our customers that they find it also important that a package is recyclable and is a sustainable uh, packaging solution. Mm -hmm. So at Coveris we have a very clear strategy in this. We say no waste and no waste sounds a bit funky because no waste, yeah, what no waste? No landfill, no litter, nothing. No, we have a very clear strategy on this and we say no waste means to us no product waste. So if you translate this to medical packaging, we see and hear in the market that sometimes due to a, a short shelf life of a product, a product is thrown away. So what we try to do is that we produce packaging which has a extended shelf life so there is less of product waste. So we, we see that as one of, the, one of the important points. On the other side we also believe that no packaging waste is important and what do we mean here is that the package we produce top and bottom web uh, or sold to our customers as top and bottom in pouch or, or form fill seal applications are recyclable. And what we mean there is that it should be out, made out of one polyolefin family, so what we call a mono solution. And mono solutions are easier to recycle versus a material combination where you have two separate materials where you in fact either need to completely separate them or the other way of recycling is to burn them and mm -hmm. that's not what we like. Mm -hmm. Then last point in our pillar of no waste is uh, no operational waste. And what we mean here is that in our manufacturing sites we try to limit uh, any waste during the production process. So we try to be as green as possible by renewed energy uh, but also what we call post-industrial recycling. Mm -hmm. So with post-industrial recycling in our manufacturing process we separate the trim waste during the production process and generate new granulates from this. Mm. We know that in the medical device area this is still a kind of a grey area or a no-go area due to regulations that products need to be virgin. Um, but I think this is, in our opinion, uh, the future. Why can we not have in the middle layer of a mono material, if we make a five layer mono material and in the middle layer we use um, a post-industrial recyclable layer and there is no migration to the outside or to the contact layers of the product. I think this is the future. That, there is where we can reduce the operational waste in our manufacturing process as well as the customer's manufacturing process. Mm. Okay. So, but maybe a question back to you. What is DuPont doing in, in terms of recycling and, and uh, maybe even with, with post-consumer waste yeah. or post-industrial waste? Good question also. Um, DuPont is doing a similar thing as, as Covira is doing. If I listen to your story, uh, we are uh, saving the trim waste that we uh, create during production of Tyvek um, and we uh, make uh, pellets out of them and out of the pellets we make new plastic cores for uh, transporting the, the rolls to, to you and, and other customers. So that's one of the things we are doing. Okay. 
Good. And, and besides that, so that's something we do internally. And we're working with direct customers, just like you, and also with indirect customers to see what we can better work together to, uh, to manage the waste streams that we all create. Uh, in, in your case, it would be maybe looking together at, at your trim waste. Uh, and in the case of, a, of a direct customers, um, also in their production, there might be some Tyvek waste which we can, uh, which we can maybe stream better. So that's that's uh, concrete projects that we're doing at the moment. Okay. And when you were talking about uh, this middle layer, Jan Willem, it, yeah. it sounds interesting to me. Could you tell me a little bit more about it and how you see that uh, working in, in a real packaging for a real product? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can try to explain uh, at least. Um, so let's say if you use a, a mono material, the, the strength for mono materials is normally that you need to increase a little bit the thickness and you need to use multiple layers uh, in comparison to a, uh, let's call it a PA, PE. It's a two layer where you get the strength and the puncture resistance from the PA layer mm -hmm. and the sealability towards Tyvek from the PE uh, layer. Mm -hmm. If we now look to a mono PE layer, uh, which matches really nice with, with uncoated Tyvek because Tyvek is made of, of HDPE. Um, then the PE material needs to be a little bit thicker and if you use, let's say, multiple layers, you get, you get strength. So if we look at the outer layer, we normally put in a, a PE peel layer to make it nice and a fiber-free peel. Um, but then the middle layer, so let's, let's assume it's a three layer or a five layer, then either layer two or layer three, which is capsuled within, let's say, virgin material layers. Mm -hmm. There, I, I believe, or we believe, that we can really put in a, a layer where we use maybe 50% or, or, or maybe only 30% of, of post-industrial uh, waste, mm -hmm. as it did not leave our factory. Mm -hmm. it, has, it has stayed inside, mm -hmm. it's the trim waste, we can bring it back, there is traceability, and we can mix it back into, into that middle layer in the, in the granulates, let's okay. say, once we extrude. So, yeah. That's a good point about the traceability, because, because that's an important topic yeah. when you talk about medical packaging and how to trace back when something goes wrong. Sure. So you're, you're convinced that the traceability is still in place yep. with the method that you did just uh, described. Yeah, okay. and let's say on the way we manufacture, uh, it's always in campaigns where, uh, where we produce campaigns of medical packaging or, or medical uh, resins, etc. Before we do a full line clearance, um, before we move to, let's say, food manufacturing okay. or, or any other industrial product. Okay. Um, Okay. So I think, yeah, it sounds it's good. Awesome. And I was also intrigued by, the, by the, your remark about the longer shelf life. It sounds very logical to me. Yeah. So, I mean, in some cases, nurses have to throw away packages because of expired shelf life. You say we extend the shelf life, so there's, there's less throwing away. How long is this shelf life? Or how long could it be? Is there any... Yeah, let's say if, if we go back a few years, um, and I think this, this is just a, a case study uh, I will explain. Um, I was a customer making hips. And um, you know, not everyone has the same size, so also not everyone has the same hip size. So hospitals need to carry a small hip till the XXL version uh, for tall people. And of course, in the middle range, that's used, I would say daily, uh, but the, the other ones are used rarely, mm -hmm. but they, they need to have them on stock. Mm -hmm. So what was in the past, a, uh, after sterilization, um, the manufacturer, so the MDM, put on a shelf life of, of three, but mainly with these steel implants, it's, it's five years. Uh, but we tested and pushed our packaging, uh, and uh, as well Tyvek, to go to, to seven or even 10 years shelf life. So instead of every five years or three years taking back these products out of the, let's say, ordinary range, reprocess them and repack them and ship them back, they can now skip that process mm. and do it even three or five years later. Mm. And I think there is where we also, well, where customers uh, or our customers, so the MDMs can mm. save a lot of money, mm. but also a lot of packaging waste because okay. that's virgin packaging material, sterilized, stored in the hospital, not touched, comes back, opened, reprocessed and sent out again. And mm. I think that's by extended shelf life, we can really save a lot of packaging and costs uh, at our customers. Jan Willem, um, it's um, certain organizations in Europe and, and outside Europe and also in the US like HPRC, so Healthcare Plastic 
Recycling Council yep. uh, have come up with some uh, design guidelines for medical packaging. And I've been going through this list of, 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 of guidelines and one of the things that stood up to me was uh, using mono materials. And mm -hmm. that is, a, I think, a perfect link to, to, to the developments at, at Coveris. Could you tell me a little bit about, I think it's two products that you're currently yep. uh, promoting at the market. And, uh, Tell me a little bit about yeah. it. So yeah, we we have a uh, it's a uh, it's a pouch product. Uh, so it's a, it's a standard it's a standard pouch chevron pouch with a with a peelable uh, uh, opening feature. And on one side it's used uh, uncoated Tyvek 1073B, and on the other side we use a, um, uh, a OPA a PE, and this uh, uh, bi orientated uh, PE gives the strength of of the puncture resistance and mm. and and for sharp devices a little bit of a. Huh? Of a, of a higher strength there mm -hmm. or um, and what the nice thing here is, is because of the PE peel layer um, it's a nice uh, opening peel and what you see there is that it's yeah it's a fiber free peel with a nice yeah visible um, impression as well mm -hmm. and this product can be used uh, for EO stabilization and uh, gamma okay uh, so that's the uh, the standard pouch offering and uh, next to that, for our, uh, let's say customers who use uh, form-filled seal, so a bit more for the bulkier devices, we have a, a thermoformable uh, film, and this thermo thermoformable uh, film uh, is also made out of a, a mono material structure. Mm -hmm. um, it's called form peel, and uh, this form peel material we uh, extrude uh, from 100 microns up to 600 microns. So that means it's a it's a flexible version. Uh, but it's also semi-rigid if you go to the 600 microns, mm -hmm. so it can also replace or could potentially replace the standard A-pads or, uh, or PEGs for the more rigid uh, requirements. And also here it's a fiber-free peel, mm -hmm. um, yeah, suitable for EO stabilization and gamma stabilization. And the nice feature in this product, it has almost zero back shrinkage. So once you start forming it and it's formed, it will not shrink back. Okay. Uh, and it also works really nice with, let's say, banana shaped uh, forming molds, etc. So yeah, it's, a, it's I think it's a semi or well, relative unique product yeah. in the market. And the nice thing now is, is that we are together with you, with DuPont, are uh, working with Cyclos. Um, to get this all tested and uh, also approved and certified that those two solutions mm -hmm. are 100% recyclable and that we get this this proof uh, and statement or certificate even yeah. Um, yeah, to launch it to the market. So the form peel is already available. Uh, we sell it already commercially for, uh, for a number of years in fact. And the uh, OPEP is relative new and that's what we are launching uh, yeah, soon once the, um, the certificate okay. is in. Yep. Thanks for that. And I can understand that one of the biggest advantages of this package is that you can throw uh, the, the same package in the sa in in in, a, in, a, in one bin. Yeah. Because exactly. of the PE and the HDPE. Yeah. Yes. So exactly. So like like you said, let's say in a traditional pack where you don't use the same materials, um, yeah, you throw it away like this, then it's general waste yep. because it's not separated. Uh, but this one you can throw away like it is, still partly sealed after presenting the device. Uh, it can be thrown away as 100% recyclable mono solution in the PE uh, family. It seems like uh, it's a very easy product to to, dis to get rid of, to dispose. Um, yeah. I imagine in a hospital operating room there's a lot of different packaging materials. How could a nurse you know, make a distinguish between what to throw where? I mean, this is a clearly yeah. PE to us, but, but what to people who are not so much in the product? How can they see what where to throw what? Yeah, this this is... A very good question, Bart, because this is what, what we hear a lot from the market, uh, especially from the from from the nurses, because we talk to nurses about new packaging development. Do you like this? How how huh? how, how does it open? Is it easy to present? But we also ask the question, how do you recycle it? And uh, nurses told us that it's uh, for them it all looks the same. It's on one side it's plastic, on the other side it's it's Tyvek or or, or medical grade paper, and they don't know what to do with it. So we, we launched a proje uh, project within the, uh, the SBA, so the, mm -hmm. uh, the Sterile Barrier Association, um, similar to the project we had on the symbols indicating what is the, the primary barrier, what is the secondary barrier, uh, which is the, the sterile barrier even. So sometimes you have, let's say, the outside is the sterile, sterile barrier and the inside is just a protected or the other way around. Yeah. So there we, we have this symbol system. So Within the SBA, uh, we had the, the, this discussion about how can we assist nurses uh, or hospital staff to identify what is what. 
So we are currently developing uh, new symbols, which we hope that the, um, the market will accept, uh, which indicates this is 100% re recyclable material, can be thrown away as such, uh, or this needs to be separated as it are two different materials. Mm -hmm. So that's something we are working on right now. Uh, education process starts so everyone understands and mm. I think that's a big step forward also for hospitals to reduce waste uh, and get clear waste streams of this is recyclable non-contaminated material and this is general waste and this is, is contaminated so okay yeah that's it, it, it sounds like the industry is doing a lot more than before to uh, to reduce waste streams and I think that's a very good thing. Um, is there anything I forgot to ask you today? No, and I that think you want to mention? No, no, I think I think we we co we covered all and I think it's our responsibility to keep nature like this and uh, that also our children or our children's children um, are able to see the beauty we are in and uh, yeah. So yeah. we take res responsibility, we stand for no waste, and we assist the market in getting 100% recyclable mono materials. Thank you very much, Jan Willem, for your time. It was well, a pleasure, and uh, I was especially happy that it was not raining today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was nice that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we could have this interview on distance. Uh, we both live in the Netherlands, so we, we uh, followed the rules, the local rules here. And it was nice to do it this way versus uh, a yep. digital interview. So thanks for that, Bart. And uh, thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. You can find more info in the links we show you after. Thank you. Oh,